Welcome to the Burn Factory Podcast with Priest and Phoenix Rivera. Listen as the boys interview the biggest names in sports and entertainment. The Burn Factory starts now. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Burn Factory Podcast. As you may know, I'm your host, Priest, joined by my co-host, my brother, Mr. Phoenix. Say what's up to the camera. What's up, y'all? This is called the Burn Factory for a reason. I was literally, literally caught on fire. 50% chance to live. 50% chance to live. But through that, started this podcast because I believe every person out there on this planet goes through a burn moment somewhere in their life that got them to where they are at today. Yes, you heard priests say burn moment. So a burn moment is a really hard time in someone's life that you have to fight and to get through to be where you are today. Me and Priest believe that every single person go through burn moments every single day that help build them to where they are today. But Priest, man, do we have a guest today? We have have a a guest guest today. Our guest has truly lived a burn moment life from being cut by the UFC to a two-time flyweight champion. He's the first ever Mexican-born UFC champion. In 2021, he was the breakout fighter of the year. He also won 2021 Fight of the Year versus Davidson Figueredo and recently just won back his UFC flyweight strap that is rightfully his. Let's go. So please give a warm welcome to the assassin baby champ, Brandon (laughs) Moreno. Let's go. Bravo. (laughs) Bravo, bravo, bravo. (laughs) Listo, listo, listo. Oh, Uh, my goodness. Where's the way goes? (laughs) <laughs> we don't, we don't, right, do you know what is crazy right now, brother? Right now, I'm so crazy busy, and I don't have all the time to build it. Oh. So I have, like, a, a lot of uh, closed boxes in my office waiting for me. So oh. every single time when I have a little time, I try to do it. But right now, my life uh, is too much. Too but, crazy. I mean, too but I love it to do it. Do you, you do it again? Uh, you do it before? Yeah. Um, not as much now. When we were little, a little, little, I did, I did Legos. Um, I built an airplane. Okay. One time, um, didn't go so well. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> um, but I mean, you have thousands of Legos. I mean, I've seen it on Instagram. Out of all those Legos, what is your favorite one? So my favorite one is. Uh, do you like? Do you like uh, Marvel? Yeah. Mar- yeah. So I built last year, if I remember, I built the Daily Bugle from uh, Spider-Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, where, where he works for the newspaper. It's all the building. It's very cool. I don't remember how many pieces are uh, that Lego set, but it's a lot. You know, it's too, it's too much uh, uh, Lego pieces, but I love it. And it's crazy because so everything is... I started to build Legos when I was in Tijuana. Uh, and my home there was like small. I don't have like enough enough room for all my sets. So then I moved here to Vegas, and you know I got a little bit more space. But man, now maybe the next step is to get another home, <laughs> a, a bigger one, hopefully. And, and just, Vegas just for your Legos. Yeah, maybe I don't know. No, no, Vegas for sure. Yeah, okay, okay. Vegas for sure. Right now, I'm. I feel like I'm doing really good things here in Vegas. I I am start to build a, a little and a small but amazing uh, team uh, with my training partners, my coaches, and we are doing something uh, great things here in Vegas. So yeah, for sure, we'll, the next hump will be here. How crucial is it for you to like have like that small knit circle? Because you see UFC fighters now, they belong to these huge teams, ATT, uh, all these <laughs> crazy teams. And now you have your own little circle. So is it like, is it good for you? You have a good question because, I mean, I have a lot of respect for the for the big teams. I mean, like, I don't know, like American top team is a yeah. very successful team, right? They had in, in, in some point like a lot of champions there. It's crazy how 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 they can manage. Uh, I don't know, like 40, 50, 60 fighters at the same time. Obviously, you need a, a good system to try to do that. But uh, I was in a huge team before and a big team before, and that works for me. But in some point, I, I decide to try to 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 find something different. 
you know. So I, I bring a few partner, partner uh, training partners to live here in Vegas with me. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, my coaches, and every single uh, training session is, a, is like a private uh, training session, and uh, everything works for me. You know, if my training partners has a, a, a fight, the coaches work for them. You know, but everything is very specific. Just just a few people, and you uh, and the coaches can be more fo focused in develop all your your skills for yourself. You know. For sure. What what big gym were you at before? I mean, it's, it was in, in in Mexico in Tijuana. Oh, okay. Anthem Gym is right, right now. Is is very huge. Mm -hmm. They they have like. Uh, like 40, 50 fighters right wow. uh, right there. I started there. I started training there in 2006. I was a kid, 12 years old, and I was chubby, you know. I was finishing my elementary school, and I decided to start to do something, you know, mm -hmm. because always after the school was like, you know, I finish the school, I go to home, eat, and then grab some, I don't know, like Oreo cookies, whatever, go to my room and start to play video games, <laughs> I start to watch uh, TV, Dragon Ball Z, whatever. So I don't know, at some point I was like done with that life, and I decided to... to to do some exercise, to, to practice some sport. Didn't That's your mom enroll you into that camp too? Like, Whenever, didn't your mom enroll you into that camp too? Sometimes, but but no, because they, you know, normally they they are they are they have a, a, a family co a company, mm. Mm. right okay. in, in, in my home. Is. The 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 company is in my home actually. They have a, a little warehouse be, uh, behind the the, the home. Like a little store, uh, they have a piñata business. Yeah. So I grow up uh, watching them like working so hard every day, and they they are uh, it's crazy because they born like very uh, uh, poor, but they make the piñata business and then they start to grow up with the business, and they start to get a better life. So they are very poor, but when I I start to uh, to grow up too, everything was fine. You know, they gave me an amazing life. You know, I, I don't have like any qu any concerns about it. Mm. That kind of leads us into um, our acronym. So we use the acronym BURN. So each letter is like a little different time in your life. Um, so B does stand for beginning. You're talking about your childhood. But what were some of those like burn moments that you had as a child that you had to go through or else you wouldn't be sitting here today? I You know, I mean, to be honest with you, I think my burn moments start like later when I'm starting to be by myself and for example when i when i got my daughter because when i was a a a, a, a child everything was a kind of easy and I, I don't want to say i was rich because now is not the case hopefully <laughs> 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 but i mean i never i never had like a really like uh, problems or, or necessities i always had like food in my table in my mm -hmm. table I, I got like good gifts in, in christmas whatever you know but it, i think when I start to to see my future, because I remember this, I, I was very young and I, I decided to be a fighter. And it's weird because, you know, you are 16, 17, and maybe you're not thinking too much about the future. Like, <laughs> let's see what happens. Just let's get fun. And yeah, I was, I, I was a child. I was getting fun. But at the same time, I was start to get more and more love from the sport, for the sport, you know. Um, but um, uh, uh, I married very young with my with my wife. It's, right now, she's still my wife. She passed with a lot of uh, bad moments with me, so that's why I I, I love her. But we got uh, our first daughter. I ha I had a twenty years old, and and everything started to change. And I and I'm jumping moments, but I mean, I, I yeah. you told me about the the burn moments. Everything started like that because uh, I remember uh, before my daughter, when my mind. In my mind, I was a kid. I love to do a stupid jokes or whatever, you know, whatever, just enjoying life. But but when I was in the hospital and the, the nurse uh, take me to the to the place with, with all the babies and I mm -hmm. saw my, my my daughter there, something happened in my mind, like something explode, like fuck, like this is serious, this is real. Like yeah. now it's not just me. Now it's not like whatever happens in the future. Now I need to get success because if I don't get success, my, my wife, my, my, my daughter uh, don't get success too. So that changed my mind for sure. 100%. Was there, going back to whenever you were a kid, was there a certain person that one, that made you want to fight? No. So for example, I, I, I had a, an, um, uh, a, a, na a neighbor uh, who he was uh, practicing uh, karate, 
regular curry. And one day I, I went to, to his home to sleep there with him, you know, playing video games, eat, eat uh, junk food, and <laughs> then go to, to, the, to the vet. So before that, uh, I went to one of uh, his practice and I saw, you know, all the discipline, the respect, the, the gi, I don't know how you say it in English, gi, right? Yeah, gi, the gi yeah. For karate. Um, the, the belts, the, the colors of the belts, you know, the be very respectful in the moment when you step on the mat, mm -hmm. be very respectful with the, with the coach, the professor and all that stuff. And was, and that's, that's why I'm start, I decided to do combat sports because I wanted to do sports. But that's why I think I decided to go for combat sports. So next day I went with my mom like, hey mom, I wanna do I wanna do uh, something, you know, I wanna do some exercise, I wanna mm -hmm. do some sport to do something after the school because I'm done to just go to my room, mm -hmm. uh, watch TV, uh, play video games, and eat cookies. That's yeah. that's it for me. Um, so first of all, I try to I try to to practice uh, capoeira. I don't know if you never uh, play this video game Tekken. Tekken? Tekken. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fight uh, oh. video huh. game. Never heard I don't of it. I think so. No, no. Oh. Man, it's amazing. We'll have to try it out though. We should. Uh, it's 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 a new, it's a new wing, a new one coming soon. Oh really? The Tekken Eight is is really Taken, good. Tekken. They made they made seven of them. Yep. Oh man, my it's god. Man, it's in a really famous video game. It's, yeah. It's really cool. Uh, I start to play that video game when it's the PlayStation One. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I remember like the little Nintendos. Did you ever play those? Yes. Like, of Nintendos. Course. Oh, hold, hold, you like are 16? I'm 16. 16. You are 19. 19? 19. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Because I feel like we are a uh, different uh, different season, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're, we're, all, we're, we're a little all young. Up in, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, like, back to what you're saying, you started out as MMA was just exercise for you, but yeah. what was that point that you're like, you know what, maybe I could. Make a career out of this. So going a little bit back, so I don't find we don't find nothing about Capoeira in, in Tijuana. I don't remember if my mom does doesn't find like any place or the place was bad. I don't know. But we find uh, the mixed martial arts gym, mm -hmm. and everything was crazy. And in that moment, I don't know nothing about jujitsu, about wrestling, kickboxing, whatever. But everything was nice because um, the the how, how you say in english the the billboard the spectacular yeah yeah like the sign mm -hmm. looks very very cool you know sign, with yeah. with the cage and uh -huh. the blood and all this stuff like oh okay <laughs> and the name the name was uh, in that moment the people uh, talk about mixed martial mixed martial art as uh vale todo vale todo vale todo is is obviously it's in, it's in spanish but that means in english like everything Everything is permitted, like kind of. Like it's good, like. No, no, no. How you say, like you can do everything. Oh, oh, okay. So like, huh. no, like restrictions. No restrictions, kind of. Yeah, kind yeah. of yeah. You know? Okay. So oh, that was crazy, uh, and I start to do it, but I, I start to see all the discipline, all yeah. the respect, all the hard work you need to do to to improve your skills. Um. So I'm start twelve. I start my amateur career at fourteen. Um. I had a a long amateur career. I I had three years. As, a, as an amateur, and I got a lot of success. success. Then um, I decided to, to do my professional debut in Tijuana at, at 17 years old. Um, and that's it, man. I started to just uh, uh, love the sport. In some point, I was uh, my, my uh, how you say, my qualification in the school. Oh, I was certifi no. certifications? So, no, like... Uh, what is it called? My results in the school oh, okay. start yeah. to go like very grades. My grades, grades start yeah. to oh. go very down yeah. because I mean, you know, the regular kids who say like, nah, start to put a lot of excuses. They I don't yeah. like the school because da, da da. But I mean, I was being re really honest with my parents. Hey, I don't like this. I prefer to be in the gym all day. Yeah. You know, uh, so I was putting all my effort to to be better in the sport. At twelve? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, with the pass of the time. Oh, oh you know? okay. As so time came on. I start. I started at twelve. I started my my amateur career at fourteen, mm -hmm. and then at seventeen, I did my my uh, professional debut. Uh, I don't know, like around. 18, 19, I, I say, like, you know what? I, I want to do this. This is That's cool. What what was the name of the fight league where you had your first professional fight? Uh, it's a it's a local uh, uh, league in Tijuana, UWC. I started there. I, I had uh, three fights there. And then I started to fight in the United States, actually in California. Okay. I, I fought. The, the first fight I had in, in California uh, was in Riverside. 
Okay. Yeah, I fall in Riverside. I, I fall in Pomona. Okay. Uh, yeah, between them. Then I, I went to Albuquerque, New Mexico for the developer program of, from the UFC. I, I went there to Jackson, MMA. A, a lot of fighters from there, like John Jones. Yeah, John Jones in that moment was Kobe Cerrone, Diego Sanchez, and another guy, John Dodson. So yes, um, I was I was there for I were there for five months. Then I came back. Uh, all my all my my training partners from Latin America because it was a, de a developer programs, right? Uh, uh, like twelve guys from Latin America, you have to pay them to come to the United States and train, you know, and develop all the the abilities of the fighters. So I was part of the twelve guys. I stayed there by uh, five months. Then my other, the other guys, because they are like older than me. And that moment, I, I had 20 years old. So all my training partners went to the, the Ultimate Fighter Latin America, the mm -hmm. first season. But because I had 20 years old, and they have a lot of uh, sponsors for, uh, of alcohol and that stuff, I, I wasn't permitted to go there. Yeah. So I came back to Tijuana, and then uh, some guy uh, get uh, fights, got fights for me in Arizona, in Phoenix, mm. Phoenix, Tucson. Yeah, between Phoenix yeah. and Tucson, I and I keep uh, doing more fights there. So as a like an early pro, like as you made like you turned pro that early, like your early fights, um, was it a lot of like bouncing around promotions, or did you just kind of stick to one like promotion? Like no, in that in that moment it was because it was the the only uh, professional league in my hometown, you know. Oh, oh, it was with. I uh, don't, I don't have option. And yeah. It was like oh, if you wanna fight, the, the only fights are oh, there okay. in, in in that league, so that's why. Did you have dreams making it to the UFC at that point? Oof, good question. Uh, my my first goal was to make a, a good record. So I, I always try to put some targets in my in my life. You know, I think the, the in short period my my first goal was to make an, a a nice record because when I start to to be a professional, I was very young. Yeah. I I had a really good technique, but I was very young. And I was fighting against guys like stronger than me, bigger than me, with better uh, body, whatever. So in that point, when the guys has a, a good level, uh, the the you know the strength, the power is important too. You know because you, you hear this, uh, uh, you know the technique is more important than the the strength, and that's true. Mm -hmm. When the other guy doesn't know nothing, but when two guys know know the same, those small difference, you know. Are make the difference okay which is it's <clears throat> it's crazy now because i feel like every year like the ufc like are bringing in these younger and younger guys and you look at raul rosas now he's 18 fighting against 25 26 year olds like that's that's crazy to me yeah uh, i mean he's my, my training partner raul and uh, it's insane how the how good he is like he's very tough i mean uh, to be honest with you i think he needs a little bit more time to start to think about championships or whatever but I mean, he he, he has he has the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. He has all the time in front of him. He just need to be patient. He just need to be very open mind and start to get more more experience. And that's it. But I mean, if the guy uh, keeps the same way, he will be champion for sure. Do you think he'll be champion by twenty? Uh, how old is he? So eighteen. Right now he's he's twenty two. Do you think he'll be champion by by the time he's twenty two? <sighs> Oof. <sighs> twenty two. Four years. Yeah. Years. Terrible in math. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. I'm also oh, in math. Uh, four, years. four years. Maybe, man. If not, if not champion, maybe yeah. Uh, uh, close. Uh, very close. Like fighting against top ten, top five opponents. We mm -hmm. were actually at his last fight. It was here in Vegas, yes. yeah, December tenth. And I'll never forget. I was sitting in the stands, and I was like. I like this kid. This kid has something about him that I like, and it reminds me of Brandon Moreno. And I was like, yep. <laughs> He'll be champion one day. No, one hundred percent. Yeah, man. I mean, he if he keeps the same the same path, I mean, he will be champion for sure. And he, he has this co crazy confidence on himself. Like he grabbed the mic and hey, I want to do this and this and this, and everybody listened. So that's that's an, an important skill. I think even me, I don't I don't have that skill to to show to the people. But I mean, he's the 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 full package for sure. Confidence is key in fighting. I mean, you saw with McGregor and. Jones and yeah. DC and these guys just go on these crazy tears and 
Confidence is key. Same with golf. In golf, you can't go into a tournament not confident because then you're going to play bad. I'm sure you can't go into a fight not confident because you're going to make these mistakes and end up getting caught and all she wrote. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you need to be calm in, in uncomfortable moments, right? Um, obviously, obviously, I don't know too much about golf, but I mean, this, when, when you start to go with, to high level, you need to be just calm when all, you feel all the pressure. I mean, right now, for example, every single fight... I have I have two years in a row fighting for titles. Yeah. So man, always the pressure is more and more and more, and man, you need to keep calm and you need to uh, to feel the pressure, but at the same time, like manage manage uh, that pressure well because I mean it's hard. It's hard. What What's a burn moment? Uh, what's like a good burn moment and trying to keep yourself uh, being calm in those situations? Uh, mm, like every like a kind of like every single time, for example, like yeah, or like a fight, like whenever you're in the back room and you're just like, man, I'm starting to feel the pressure of this fight. What do you do? Like, what's a bare moment that you, you know what? I'm gonna stay calm. <sighs> like so, I I just uh, you know what? I just trying to listen to myself. I, and I remember uh, this um, before to get uh, to got caught from the UFC. I was trying to enjoy the moment to enjoy the pressure in the in the locker room for example i was trying to f to fake a smile and i say fake because you know what you feel ner you feel so nervous you feel even scared mm -hmm. you know I, I mean since this moment i feel scared in every single of my fights um but i was trying to to smile to the people to try to make them feel better i don't know why because i mean in that moment it's my moment i just i just want to make me feel good myself but you know uh, and I was going like that to the fight, and that works in some point. But when I start to fight with higher level opponents, uh, that that start to uh, stop to work for me. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy because being like an outsider watching your fights, you look so calm in them. No, no, it's, no. Yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think I manage very well all the pressure. You know, yeah. one hundred. But uh, but I mean, every single uh, no, I mean, every, each moment I manage the the moment different. So like that, that's, I think that's my first season in the UFC. So the second season after to go back to the UFC, I put this uh, kind of character uh, like Matt, Brandon Moreno, like no more smile, Killer. nothing. I, I was going like very angry to the octagon, right? To the fight. And that uh, works in some point too, because I was, I start to win fights and win fights and win fights. I remember the fight, my first fight against Kai Kara France. Uh, man, in that moment, I was on fire, man. My mm. mind was like, man, I wanna kill this guy, you know? I wanna kill this guy because eh, I need to show to the people I deserve to be here, you know? I need to show to the, to the, to the crowd, to the fans, uh, to, uh, to everybody. I mean, I'm a real fighter. No, I'm not just a, 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 a casualty in life. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And then I think my, then, then my next. Uh, evolution is I don't know be, be, be just like really? stoic like neutral my last fight in Rio de Janeiro man was crazy was insane man I mean you throwing look, beers at throw, you as you're uh -huh. leaving I know you are yeah. like huge uh, GFC uh, uh, fans so I definitely you, you saw my last fight. Mm -hmm. So everybody was insane screaming against me. You know, I was in Brazil. Uh, 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 Figueiredo is Brazilian. Chance. Everybody was against me uh, saying, ah, you're going to die in, in yeah, Portuguese. You, Ooh, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. That's what Ooh, it is. I, I'm okay. I never knew what it was, but I knew it was like, you will die. You will, you will die. And I, but man, and a lot of people asking me about that, about that moment. Like, hey, what, how you feel? Like, nothing. Do you even hear anything? I hear everything, but you do? I, and but I, in my mind, I was repeating what they say. Like, oh, I'm okay. <laughs> I was getting fun, man. Yeah. I was getting fun, but my face was neutral. Like, yeah. I don't care, man. And in the middle of the fight, I hear the people screaming again against uh, me again, but I was neutral, yeah. stoic. So talk talk about that fight a little bit. Um, in the second round, like you, you were, he got you in a guillotine, and it was pretty tight. So. Um, what was that like? Kind of like burn moment in that guillotine. Like, did you like start to panic at all, or were you just staying calm? Like, what well, was it close? Like, how tight was it? <laughs> 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 no, man, that nah, wasn't. No, wasn't tight. Nah. It wasn't tight. I mean, it wasn't it was tight, but 
I don't know, because I have a, a regular neck. You know, these fighters who like looks like they don't have neck like this. I have a regular neck and everything, but I always been like very good, uh, uh, like uh, escaping, escape, escape, mm -hmm. escaping, escaping, escaping from guillotines. I don't, I don't know why I have. I always, I al I'm always very calm in those positions, fighting my hands, uh, breathing w uh, very well and everything. So, yeah, for sure, in some point the guy was trying to like uh, yeah. pull my 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 neck out, but I, I like you say, I was just trying to keep myself calm. And stay relaxed and be patient. In that kind of positions, the, the one of the keys is like be patient. Don't get like desperate because if in the moment when you start to, <laughs> it's when you are maybe out. So I just keep calm and the guy uh, uh, take oh off the, God, the guillotine, yeah. take my my my, mm -hmm. my neck out, and I start to put control on him. And man, this th that last fight it isn't safe to think about it because the first three ones. The fights were like crazy wars, right? Like yeah. exchanges, oh, yeah. uh, scrambles. The first one. My face looks horrible. His face <laughs> looks horrible, uh, and that's it. But in this four one, my mind, my mind was so calm because I had an amazing training camp, uh, and I want to say amazing uh, training camp, uh, uh, kind of because I had a lot of troubles in the yeah. middle of the training camp, but I always uh, put all my effort to to pass all the obstacle mm -hmm. on my way. And I, ha again, I have an amazing people around me. Uh, and we, man, we, we did it. And I think it was a uh, kind of easy fight for me. <laughs> <laughs> easy fight. Uh, <laughs> is, he, is he strong? Is he strong, Davidson? You, you know what? I'm, I mean, he's not stronger than me, but he punched harder than me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's weird because he looks like very muscular. And But talking about the strength, talking about uh, power, um, you, I know a lot of fighters who looks like very muscular, but they're not like really, really strong. I mean, like me, you can tell with the with my training partners or with my coaches, I'm I look like terrible. My body is not like <laughs> I don't have like any abs. My my biceps like very small, whatever. But the people say I'm very strong. Yeah. Oh. 100%. So I don't care. So that's the thing. I'm I'm stronger than him, but he punched harder than me. So I was needed to be like very careful about the the right overhand every single time. Oh, for sure. I don't, I don't think he's as hard or as hard as a puncher as you. I mean, in the second fight, you dropped him with a jab and then quickly got him into the rear naked choke and became <laughs> the first Mexican-born champion. <laughs> right? Well, well, could you even sleep that night after you won the belt? I, I, you know what? I, I can't sleep every single fight for the adrenaline. Huh? Uh, it's insane. I, I, it's hard to explain too uh, because you have a lot of emotions. So you you wanna spend time with your people around. You are so happy. Uh, you are checking social media to watch all the news, the pictures, whatever. You are excited and you are happy. And uh, no, I I can't sleep uh, after after a fight unless in that one. Mm -hmm. You know oh, that yeah. moment was special. Uh, I remember that moment in 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 Arizona in Phoenix because first of all, I think it was the first event. After, uh, I mean, kind of after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Not after the pandemic because the pandemic was there, but it was the first event with live, crowds. Yeah. Live, live crowd. With, yeah. All this, with all this mess. So the people feel like excited, like, hey, I miss this feeling to be in the arena with a lot of people screaming, watching fights, live fights, right? Uh, and in the moment when I, when I won, <sighs> man... I, I promise I, I can explain. Yeah. And, you know, Phoenix is a is a place with a lot of Mexican people. So I, I was, like, watching all the Mexican flags around, screaming my name, very excited, the people crying with me. Man, that wasn't very nice. I, I, I'll tell you what, I got goosebumps whenever you <laughs> I, I, whenever you started whenever Joe Rogan was interviewing in there, I literally almost started crying watching you cry and just, like, all this effort and being cut by the UFC to becoming a champion, I mean, and then, you know what? I mean, remember we were talking about targets and, and goals in my future. Uh -huh. I mean, the in that moment, got the the the, the title was my long term uh, goal, man, and I did it. It's I can I can't describe the feeling uh, about because. When I when I went to the UFC the first time, my, my goal was like, okay, I need to fight here and and win fights. Then I start to win fights. Okay, now I want to be in the top in the top ten. I did it actually. 
I did it, but then I, I I lost two in a row. They caught me, whatever. But my, the goal was the same. Like, I want to be in the top five. And in the moment when I touched the top five, I, I say, like, okay, now is the time to be the champion. But, man, it's a long 10 years journey, like, fighting, uh, sacrificing things, uh, traveling a lot for training, uh, leaving my, my, my wife with my daughter in that moment. Uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, but... When you can say, like, I did it, everything means a lot for me. For sure, for sure. Everything makes sense in that moment. This portion of the Burn Factory podcast is sponsored by Phoenix Salon Suites. Please visit Phoenix Salon Suites at P-H-E-N-I-X, Salons, S-A-L-O-N, Suites, S-U-I-T-E-S, dot com to find one near you. It's time to go to you and burn unfortunate <laughs> <laughs> uh, crazy topic. Um, like myself, I was burned in a science experiment that went pretty, pretty, pretty horribly wrong. Um, didn't know if I was going to die or not. Um, 50% chance to live and just uh, life sucked at that moment. Life really sucked at that moment, but I mean, try not to get emotional about this, but um, as a fighter, I'm sure unfortunate things happen to you that get you to becoming a champion. So why don't you talk about any unfortunate bear moments that happen? Man, you were a fucking warrior, man. You know, I told, I told you that this before. You just started to tell me about your history. You're a survivor, man. So you need to be very mm -hmm. happy for that, man. You're a, you're a fucking warrior. I'm, man, I'm really impressed, man. Congrats mm -hmm. for that. Thank you. And... What can I say? I mean, I, I think it's, it's very popular, uh, my history with, with the people, no? That, my 2018 sucks, man. <laughs> Completely sucks. Because, okay, so I passed from be the main event in my, in, in my country. So UFC went to Mexico City, and I was the main event. Uh, I fought against Sergio Perez. Mm -hmm. And I passed from that to... We released from the company, and that's it. Like, okay, let's go. See you. See you later. Maybe <laughs> in that moment, you never know, right? Um, so, I had an amazing life in that moment. I I got my 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 own uh, property, my own home in in Tijuana. I had a new car. I was uh, paying on a nice uh, private school for my daughter. You know, I was living an amazing life. But in the moment when that thing happened. You start to understand, like, man, like my the life is a roller coaster, you know. The life is a roller coaster. Yeah. I literally. mean, right now we are like getting an amazing moment, talking, talking about life, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm drinking coffee. I love American <laughs> coffee, <Yeah>. americano. <laughs> But man, you don't know what happened next tomorrow, yeah. and you need to you need to live uh, like. Thinking about it, but at the same time, you, you want to keep enjoying life because you don't want to start to think about, oh, maybe I'm going to die tomorrow. Maybe, yeah. yes. But, man, you, you want to enjoy life. But in that moment, with, without that experience, mm -hmm. uh, everything sucks. Like, fuck. I need to keep uh, paying my bills. I need to keep um, um, doing uh, my, my, my stuff. I need to keep working. I need to keep uh, uh, training. But I don't have nothing now, you know. I was I was paying the I need to keep paying the the private school for my daughter, but I don't have money. I was putting my money and and now that's amazing because uh, the the investment start to grow, grow mm -hmm. up a lot. But in that moment, I spent that money and I don't have that money and I start to need it. Uh, and it, it's very frustrating to watch your your app in your cell phone that, uh, with with the, your bank. And start to disappear. watch uh, disappear the money. Like, oh my goodness, mm. it's coming! It's coming! <laughs> What's in happening? It's coming <laughs> in zeros. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. That was crazy. And start on more and more problems start to come. And man, so my second daughter, she was born in 2018. Oh. So, oh, I, I, so I needed to pay that too. Was insane, man. Was insane. A lot of people ask me, so how how I passed that bad, bad obstacle in my life. And first of all, I wasn't thinking in the future. You know, I was like, oh my goodness, I need, 
I don't know what happened in, in, in my future, what happened with UFC. I came back uh, to, to the promotion, whatever. I was very focused in the present always, every single day. Like, okay, today I need to go to the gym to do this. Uh, today I need to do that, whatever. I was always thinking in the present. That helps a lot. Other thing was... Uh, my family was with me a lot, you know, was supporting me every single moment. Even my wife, uh, she understood like all my, all the bad situation we are uh, like passing together. Mm -hmm. But just, she su su support me every single moment. She never say like something like bad or whatever. And man, I, I don't, I don't, I don't tell you, but my, my older daughter, uh, she start to got some problems in, in, in her stomach. Oh. So she, she needed a surgery. Oh. You know, and I don't have money, man. First of all, you know, that, I mean, that, but your daughter starts to feel pain every single day and you take her to the doctor and the doctor doesn't know what, what is happening. And man, you know, was my first daughter. I was like very scared every day, like about her. At the end, it was nothing like very serious, but for sure she That's needed the, the surgery. She got something in the, in the intestines. So the doctor like a, appendix. I, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, in Spanish, the name is ganglios. I don't know. It's the same in in, in, oh. in Okay, so she had something in this in the in the intestines. So the doctor needed to take 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 uh, uh, take out. So okay, in the moment when everything start to be fine with her, like okay, now she's fine. Now you need to pay the bill of the surgery. Like my goodness, oh. I don't have the money. Um, so yeah, man, I, I got a lot of support of my family. I was very focused on my, and my present and I don't know, I, I, and I start to put more focus on the thing I can control. I can control, you, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, start to think and things you, they can't control. Like, man, I can't control if right now it's raining, you know? But I can control take a, a sweater with me. I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, like, when, yeah. a, an example. But yeah, so that was the key to keep going. During that time, did the thought kind of creep in? Well, maybe I should move on to something else from MMA, or just the entire time <laughs> you're like, I'm I'm going back to UFC. Like this is my dream. This is what I'm gonna For do. For sure, man. I every single morning in that moment was like, I don't want to wake up early again. Maybe I can go tomorrow. I feel tired today. You know, all these crazy uh, uh, voices start to come to, to your mind. And that battlefield in your mind, you need to fight. You need to fight every day. So every single day in the morning when I start to feel like I don't want to go to the gym, like, shut up. Yeah. Get up. Eat your breakfast and put your ass to work because you need it. You need it. Uh, but man, for sure, like a lot of like, maybe I can stop with fighting and I can do other things. I don't know. A lot of bad things start to come to your mind, but you need know, to be strong. What What made you want to keep fighting? Was that just that moment in time made you want to keep fighting? Because you talked about how you didn't know if you want to keep fighting when that surgery was happening with your daughter and the bills. and. So, um, yeah, you remember I had like a lot of money problems, right? Uh, I start to work with my management, uh, with Jason, with Jacob, with all my uh, my Iridium Sports uh, team, um, and I was like on the phone every single day, sending messages to my to my manager, like, "Hey man, I need to get a fight. I need to fight right now because I don't have money. I'm broke, and I need to pay the bill of 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 my daughter's surgery." So he was like, "Okay, okay, okay." He was like trying to get something for me. And in, I remember, for example, he got a fight for me uh, in, in another promotion out of the GFC. LFA, uh, right? Huh? LFA? Uh, that, okay, so that was after. So oh, he oh, offered okay. me a fight uh, before that one. Uh, but the deal was terrible. And I needed to, to sign with, the, with that promotion for like three or four fights. But they will pay me like nothing, like fucking peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but man, I I was desperate. Like in that moment, I was like, okay, whatever. But I need money. Just give me the fight, and and I will. Um, but uh, that's why I start to get a lot of respect of my of my manager because a lot of managers is like, oh yes, just take the fight and shut up and okay, we can get money. But he told me like, man, I you know I have this fight for you. But I recommend you to wait a little bit more 
because this deal, I, I don't like this deal for you. Uh, I'm telling you this deal because this is my, my work to tell you about all the opportunities uh, you are getting, but I don't recommend you, to be honest, to get this deal. I said, like, ah, okay. So I, I decided to wait a little bit more, and then he offered me the fight in LFA, and everything start. Yeah. You won a belt on that fight, right? Yeah. You won the fight I, I, I fought for the, for the flyweight LFA yeah. belt, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so, then, so after that, the UFC just came crawling back and was like, hey, we want you again. Or Well, that was kind of the time where the flyweight division was in like up in the air. Like, are we going to get rid of it? Are so we not? That's, that's why uh, they, they called me uh, called me very easy because when I fought and I lost, I, I lost against like very top uh, high op uh, opponents. Like uh, I fought against Sergio Perez. I lost and he was the number five, something like that in the ranking. Then I, I fought against Alexander Pantoja. He was the number some he was in the top ten for sure. I don't remember the the, the number, but I mean I I fought against a really high opponents in and in another situation they will uh, let me mm -hmm. you know keep fighting in the in the promotion. But yeah, in that moment they they was they were trying to they, they cut all the division out. So that's why my name was very easy to cut because I came from two losses. Um, so. I fought in LFA. Uh, my my manager has an amazing relation with the UFC, so he was talking with them, and he told me like, "Hey man, like get this win, and we can do something huge in the next one. Maybe you can go back to the UFC." So I was very motivated for that too. <laughs> so uh, and yeah, uh, literal, I won the fight. I I go back to the I go out of the octagon. We went to the locker room, um, kind of locker room because it was like. Kind of ten, <laughs> but one night I love LFA. LFA yeah. is, is is amazing because he got me that opportunity to get the title in, in LFA in our in in a important promotion. So that's why UFC watched the, the fight and you know my manager Jason called the, the UFC the, the matchmaker like hey man like this guy is like uh, he deserved to be a, a, a still a, a UFC fighter. So yeah, literal like after that two weeks after they sent me my contract again. Wow. So I was like, whoa, let's go. We're back. God, we're back. We're back. Who was your first fight back in the UFC for the second time against? It was uh, Askar Askarov, a Russian guy. Okay. Oh, yeah. He was doing an, you know, uh, he was doing an amazing job in UFC. Uh, he was like winning fights uh, against really uh, top opponents. Then he lost the last one against Kaikara France. And he was scheduled for, to fight, uh, uh, you know, soon. But uh, he decided to retire because he said for uh, health issues. Uh, he never said what happened with him, but he said health issues, so he retired. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. And oh. the next one was the first one against against Kai Kara France. France. The f you know, the next one. The first one against Askar Askarov uh, was in Mexico City too, but was a draw. A lot of people. Oh, I, I, yep, I a lot that. of people uh, thought I won that fight. You know, a lot of like analysts and the people and whatever. Even I mean, I, I thought I won that fight, but I mean, it's, it is what it is, right? When you go to the judges in a close fight, that can happen. So when I fought the first time against Kaikara France, I felt like okay, this one is the opportunity to show the world I deserve to be a a, 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 a UFC fighter. So I put all my effort to win that fight. I was on fire, and you know, a few more fights. You're fighting for the title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So after Kaikara France, I fought against Yusier Formiga, a, a really UFC veteran. In that moment, he was top three, top four of the division, mm -hmm. and I beat him in Brazil. In Brazil, actually. Oh. Yeah. Uh, in the, in the in the capital of the of the country, uh, then all the thing with the with the pandemic the pandemic start to come, mm -hmm. but my name was very close to the title, right? Uh, I don't know what really happened in that moment, but UFC decided to put uh, Alex Perez for the title, and you fought, Royale. and I fought contra against a, a Brandon, Brandon, Brandon Royal, mm -hmm. and, right. and I beat him too, and that was the night when uh, Figueredo fought against Alex Perez. Both were like very healthy, and we fought in the next in the next pay per view. Yeah, it was like three weeks later, right? Uh, just three weeks yeah. later. Mm -hmm. Wow! And it was in December. Yeah, so <laughs> we fought in November 2020, and we yeah. and the next fight was in December 2020. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, that's yeah, that's fine. Yeah, About December, and then pff, next fight, fight Davidson again, second time, and I was in Arizona. Yeah. 
got a dub. <laughs> Congrats on that. Thanks, man. <laughs> and then um, fought him again in Anaheim. Same thing. I thought you won the fight. We were there. We were there. We were there watching fight, and I was like, "How? how I don't understand how they gave it to <laughs> Davidson. Like, what? Um, then rematched it up with Kai yeah. again and won again. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, um, when you go to the judges in a close fight, it's, it's hard to say who, who win, right? And the judges are humans beings, human beings too, so they can make mistakes or, or whatever. And it's very diff so it's very different when you watch the, the fight the fight live, you have a whole different perspective than when you go to your home and um, put your your you know your fight pass or whatever and start to watch the, the, the replay and you can see a whole different situation. It's it's crazy. So I understand the judges. I I, ha I don't have like any bad feelings against, mm -hmm. against them. Um, I think they need to be a little bit more prepared sometimes, but okay, it, it, it is what it is. So I fought against him, Nana him, I lost, and that moment started to make a lot of uh, changes in my life again. Burn moment. Burn moment, for sure. Because remember, I told you I started training in Tijuana in a yeah. gym. When, in that moment, I, I had like, I started there, so like 15, 16 years training in the same place. You know, I, I I travel a lot for for training to get more knowledge and experience. But at the end of the day, that was my 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 gym, my main gym, like you know, in Tijuana. So I lost the fight, and something inside of me told me like, hey man, you need to do some big changes, okay? Because okay, you won, you feel you won that fight in Anaheim against Figgy, but you know too, you made some mistakes. You, and you need to fix those mistakes. And I don't know, man. I decided to move all my, my, my training camp to another place. Uh, thanks God that works too because I was uh, very scared, you know, because when you do a, a huge decision like that, you don't know what can happen in the future. You are making a, ju a, a jump to nothing, to nowhere, you know. How hard was that change though from Tijuana? Because you came to Vegas, right? So yes. So uh, I'm I bought my home here in in in, in Vegas in 2021 after the first fight against Figi. But I was I keep training in Tijuana, so I was uh, moving forward between Vegas and Tijuana uh, for training. But then after the the fight in in Anaheim, I completely moved to Vegas for training. Um, and I was training here, and then I, I went to Glory MMA and Fitness in in, in Kansas City mm -hmm. uh, to keep my training, my official training camp there. Was that was the coach James Kraus? Yes, sir. Okay. So, okay. in this past camp, you you definitely had a burn moment inside of the camp where you you had to switch camps, and um, so how kind of hard was that time? Like being like, okay, I got to figure out a new camp while still <laughs> trying to train to get my belt back. So supposedly you need to be very focused just in your fight, right? Yeah. You need to be focused in your opponent and the game plan and the trainings, whatever. But man, all these things start to happen. And, you know, I, I don't want to talk too much about uh, the James situation. The people know. The people in the in this uh, world knows what, what happened. Uh, but yes, I, I needed to, to switch uh, camps uh, again after to change my training camp in Tijuana, right? Uh, in that moment, I, 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 I was talking with my, with my coaches, you know, because my head coach was James in that moment, mm -hmm. but I had my boxing coach, uh, Capetillo in Vegas, my jiu-jitsu coach, uh, Hector Vasquez in Vegas, and uh, my Muay Thai coach, he, he lives in, in Puerto Vallarta in Mexico, but he, he come to, to Vegas to, to train with me. Um, so I was talking with them, like, I mean, you know what, like, uh, the good thing is uh, bef before to all these bad things start to happen, uh, we made the game plan already. So we we know what we need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an amazing people around. I have my training partners. Uh, so I, I think I can do it by myself. I, I don't want to start to do all this long process to uh, to try to find a new head coach. I think we are ready. So they support my 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 decision. So we are like work working uh, here in Vegas in the Performance Institute. Mm -hmm. But then again, my my manager Jason told me like, hey man, like 
I respect your decision. You are the boss here, but man, you need a guy with the enough experience because remember, you are going to Brazil. All these people were like screaming crazy things against you, the pressure, and you never know if that bad, hopefully, I mean, you never want to, that happens, but a bad moment in the middle of the fight, you need a guy with the mind like cold, giving you the right instructions. Uh, so that's why I decided like, you know what, like, okay, maybe you have a, a real point there. So we start to work with Saif. He has a, a 40s MMA in Dallas, Texas. Uh, he came. He came with my manager, and he started to talk with with him. Like, hey man, like I know you are passing for a really bad moment right now. So if you need me, I'm here. I know Brandon is an amazing guy. I know you love Brandon. I love James too. I have a really good relation with him. So I'm here. I, I'm here to help. He came to Vegas to work with me uh, to to get on a, a one training session together. Uh, he started to tell me about the fight, what he thinks about all uh, his thoughts, and you know, like, like okay, okay, okay. I I I decide to start to work to to work with him. I mean, he he's an amazing coach too. He's really really good. This is me. this is before he fought Davidson again in Brazil. Yeah, before yeah. like okay. fight, yeah, like five weeks before, kind wow. of. Wow. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Was well, very quick, and that's very why quick. And how long is the fight camp? Twelve? Is it twelve weeks? So it's crazy because I'm always training, man. Even yeah, t- yeah. right now, when I don't, I don't have a fight. Uh, I train in the morning. I, 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 right now, I'm trying to. I mean, in building season, so I'm lifting very, very heavy, whatever. And I'm doing my drills. I'm doing boxing, and I'm doing everything. Mm-hmm. But when you have a fight, you need to now to reschedule your trainings because you need to. Sometimes I'm trying to put more intensity in my training, in my training sessions, but do less training sessions. Like, you know, like normally I have like two or three training sessions maybe, a, day? a day, but when I'm in, in official training camp, I don't want to burn my body, right? Yeah. So I'm start to, to do one or max two training sessions, but those two training sessions are very, really hard. Uh, how, how many times do you spar? In, like in Before I was uh, doing a sparring like almost every single day, but now I'm uh, <laughs> it's crazy I know. <laughs> but no, n- now I'm doing like oh, in uh, in a training camp I'm doing uh, two th- two sparring two sessions. Sparring. So one like boxing, like with like top boxers, really high intensity, and one uh, MMA uh, sparring. Okay. Do you but, think? But I mean, you you are adding the the wrestling uh, uh, roles and whatever, and you are adding the gloves and. But this is kind of a sparring too, yeah. Do you think you'll ever move to a, a time where you don't spar at all during your training camps? Because you see like Max Holloway, he's like, oh, I don't spar, like I'm saving my brain. Man, and man, don't, don't, don't be confused. I love Max Holloway. I love his style. I love how the, uh, the, the, the head movement. I love the, the position of, the, of uh, his feet. But I think that's the difference between Volkanovski and Max Holloway, you know? Well, Kanovsky do a sparring. Yeah. The timing you get doing a sparring is very important to me. That's why I, I'm, I'm still uh, doing a sparring. Because in, uh, before, I was start to, uh, to, uh, to take, to put more attention in, in that idea to, hey, maybe, uh, maybe I need to do less sparring. Maybe I don't need it, you know. Maybe I have the enough experience to don't do it. But man, the 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 timing you get doing that is very important. Also, sparring is the closest thing to a fight that yeah. you can get, so yeah. it's kind of important. But you don't want to do. I feel like you know, if I was a fighter, I would probably spar like twice, maybe. Okay. Just like, you know, feel it out and stuff. But I, I feel like sparring comes with so many injuries and. Just For sure, but I mean, you need to be smart too. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Uh, so you can start to train in camp doing a crazy five minute five rounds sparring you can because for sure the injuries will come um uh, you are putting your your our body in a in a high high in, in, in intensity so you need to be smart so you need to start like very slow like doing like light sparring touching like kind of even just like drills and then in the middle of the training camp maybe you can put a little more high intensity and at the end like Two weeks before five week, you need to have like at least two, three or four sessions like mm-hmm. hard, good, like hard uh-huh. intensity, and w- then go again uh, down. 
when well, do you start to feel the nerves for the fight? Like, say fight weeks, two weeks away. When do you start to feel, like, nervous, if you do feel nervous? That's my secret, Captain. I'm always nervous. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Nah, man, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's real. Like, you feel the pressure, man. I go again with the pressure because imagine this. So you are fighting for a title, starting from that. I mean, the title of the, the world title, right? Uh, then uh, you have an, a crazy, amazing uh, uh, opponent in front of you who he's trying to kill you with one punch, okay? Then uh, he start to use uh, social media and interviews, uh, talking shit about you. <laughs> so he's putting more pressure on you because you don't want to lose against him. Then you have your own media responsibilities. You, you have interviews. You have, I mean, the pressure just start to come to your life, man. I live in pressure every day. Even right now, sitting here, uh, I feel the pressure of my next fight. Even if I don't know who is my next opponent, you know, I think it's Pantoja, but... I mean, uh, I don't have nothing official. I think he deserves it. But I mean, even right now, I, f I, I, I feel the pressure. But again, the key is just try to keep uh, calm in your life and enjoy life. Uh, because you are always like very distracted thinking about, uh, you know, the fight, the work and everything. But man... Uh, I need to join my, enjoy my wife. I need to join my, enjoy my daughters. Maybe get some vacation sometimes. Uh, it's, I think it's important. It's mm -hmm. important more in 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 this in this uh, in this era when you have social media. You have a lot of information around the world. You know, yeah. Family over everything. Yes, man, for sure. I mean, right now I'm doing this just for my family because I think I proved to I prove a point. In the world, like, hey, I show you world. I'm a really tough guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But I, I, I don't know. For sure, I have the desire to keep uh, competing. Of course, I love to go to the fight. I love all the fight week, the the social, the social media, the interviews, whatever. But I'm doing this more for my kids. You know, I need to, I, I need to uh, secure a good uh, future for them for sure. Mm -hmm. What is it? What I'm, I'm, I'm so excited because I'm interviewing a fighter. Doing but, it. Uh, what what is it like walking into the arena before your fight? What are you just what's going through your head? Are there any burn moments? I'm just thinking, man, because eh, sometimes, for example, that fight Anaheim. I don't know why, but I I feel like angry, but like crazy angry. I mean. Pfft. Uh, but with without control, like no control in that fight, like no no control on my emotions. I I wanted to kill that guy, like he's talking shit about me, so I wanna exchange punches with him. I wanna knock him out, but man, I lost. Why? You know, I think it was because I don't put control in my emotions. Um, so and in this last one, I was so calm, man. I was so relaxed. You know what? It was funny because I was singing as uh, uh, as uh, one song of of my daughters uh, <laughs> during the fight. Uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I mean, was oh, so I was in the, the bus? Oh. I go out of the bus. I was like walking with the camera in front of me, and I was like, just enjoy the moment. You're and I can see the replay. My wife was like very nervous, and I was like, I just singing, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is your daughter a singer? <laughs> like baby shark, doo, 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 oh, I don't, re uh, I don't oh, remember okay. the so song. Like, yeah. Oh, it's like a, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for but, sure. All right, now we got to move on to R. You unfortunate 2018 wasn't the greatest year, but I feel like that's really made you and really got you where you are today but moving into r r stands for ridiculous it's kind of <laughs> funny i know you tons of fights tony tons of media obligations but was there like a ridiculous burn moment that you could share with us that you went through um my media is a ridiculous moment always yeah. they, they always told me that i can't stop to make stupid jokes even sometimes it's, it's funny and that's a kind of a ridiculous for me because i'm trying to make jokes and so my first language is Spanish. Sometimes I'm trying to, to, to show uh, um, a kind of Mexican joke mm -hmm. to an American culture, 
but they the people don't connect with my joke because it's in another long language and you know in a whole different spirit so the guys like i don't know what he, this guy is, is talking about but my mind is like i'm i'm laughing so hard <laughs> you know <laughs> they but just I, look at you like like yeah whatever <laughs> but nah, the, the 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 most part of the time they are getting fun with me i mean if you follow me in a regular five week all the staff from the ufc are getting fun with i love the the staff from the ufc i love the bodyguards i love the you know the all the blue shirts and stuff because they're an amazing people you know tate tate you know the body or uh tate's not a bodyguard but he's like the cutman okay. tate Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I always see videos of him and like Jamal Hill always going Man, back. That guy is crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, he got a lot of fun with with him, with Jamal Hill, and with Gilbert Burns. Okay. Yeah. yeah so they, are, for example, they uh, see each other and they start to wrestle in that moment. Ah, oh, they start to wrestle. Ah, oh, da 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 da. It's very funny to watch. Um and. Talking about me, I don't have a like, specific ridiculous mm. moment for sure. If I start to really think about it, I can remember. But right now, I don't have like I don't have any specific. No moment. fan, no fan asked you like some crazy like, can you do this for me? Like, autograph. No. Oh yeah. Uh, so like one month ago, I had an I had I had a a meet and greet. The Seven Eleven Experience was the name here in Vegas, and one one guy came with me and. Um, a regular guy, man, like, you know, like, small, uh, shabby, you mm -hmm. know, uh, 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 you know, I don't know, regular guy. He came with me, take a picture, and he told me, like, but, I mean, you can see when it's a, it's a joke, and you can see when it's a kind of serious thing. But he, uh, he came with me, and he told me, like, I think, I think I can, I can take you down. With this face, like, serious face, <laughs> like, and it was, like... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I can say. Like maybe, man. Congress. <laughs> and he just, and he just go. You it should have been like, try me. <laughs> and then we, we can put the gloves if you want. Then you could have double like that. <laughs> <laughs> so and another, you know, I remember this. Uh, this, this is a good one. Uh, I was in 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 Paris, France last year. Um, and one one guy, I was in a VIP experience. So the the UFC take me there to to spend time with the fans, with the VIP fans. And I was in the VIP lunch. So one guy come with me and said, hey, can I take a picture with you? And I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, man, I want to I wanna be very honest with you. Uh, I, I bet against you uh, uh, with, with the Figgy, the tier one. Like, oh, man, I mean. Congrats, you want money. Congrats for that. <laughs> Why would he say that to you? Like, <laughs> what? No, man, wait. Then, like, 30 minutes later, the same guy came with me, asked me for another picture, and he told me, like, man, I need to be more honest with you. I bet against you uh, uh, against you with, with Kai Kara Francis, the second one, but you're amazing, whatever. Like, man, just <laughs> go. go out from here, man. That's it, man. <laughs> That's it for me, man. Oh was, um, obviously, I, 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 in the moment, if you see it, it was very funny, man. It was, yeah. it was, it was I don't crazy. even know how you respond to that. You can't just be like, oh, thanks. Like, what? <laughs> it's such an odd and awkward, like, scenario. I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah. I don't know what the, the guys are expecting about me. Like, I don't know if they want to try to to make me feel mad or whatever. Um, and I have a few moments like that. Then another one, I mean, in another mirror grid, the other guy came with me and say the same, like, hey, I feel like I can meet you. Like, man, congrats for that, man. Yeah. That's why you are in the GFC winning fights. Exactly. I don't see a UFC uh, belt in your uh, trophy room. <laughs> man, I don't know, man. The people around the world is crazy, right? It's, I, I understand. <laughs> There's some, there's some crazy nothing, people. Nothing personal. Cra no. Just crazy people. Uh, we, we were actually in, uh, was that during the Tui Vasa gone fight whenever you are yes, in Paris? Yes, yes, We were actually at the um, London fight of Aspinall and Curtis Blades. And okay. We were actually in the VIP experience room too. And me and him were sitting on this like countertop, like, I don't even know what you call it. Just like a countertop thing, like drinking Coke and stuff okay. like this. And, uh. We, we saw this guy and his friend, and they walk, and they take a photo with Michael. Was it Michael? I think it was Michael Chandler. Ma okay. Yeah, I think it was Michael Chandler. And then, like, they take a photo. They get back in line, and I'm watching this guy, these, these guys, and they go back, another photo with Chandler. 
And I'm like, okay, there's something going on. Walks again, <laughs> another photo with Chandler. And I'm like, oh, is it? I was like, this can't be real. This can't be real. And oh, it was it was crazy. But yeah. I, was, <laughs> I mean, it's Man, just, I remember another one, uh, and this one is very uncomfortable because uh, uh, maybe you know I'm part of the broadcast in Spanish for the yeah. UFC. I, I know you there, right? Yeah, that's where uh, we saw you on the desk. The, yeah. After the event. So it's crazy because so the, the, the broadcast in English, they are like very, very, like very private place, right? In front of the octagon, whatever. But us, because, you know, we're not the, the main broadcast. We are in the, in the corner, just like in the fucking corner. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Let's go, fucking Mexicans. Bam. <laughs> so... Uh, it's very uncomfortable because the people has a lot of uh, really uh, access with us. Yeah, you, you know, like around, walk right past through Walking it. around, uh -huh. whatever. So, man, it's crazy because a lot of people, it, and it's crazy because it's not just one time. It's a lot of different times, so many times. Uh, I'm, like, talking. I'm working on live on, t on television, national television, international television because it's in Five Pass. And the people asking me for pictures in the middle of the, of the, of the you know, on the yeah, transmission, then, yeah. on the so I'm talking. I'm talking with with my with my uh, play by play. I'm talking with him like da 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 da. da. And this like one guy here talking. Hey, brother, brother, <laughs> brother, a picture, please come on. Could you hear it in the audio? <laughs> I mean, I can't hear him because I have the 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 headphones, the, the, the headphones but I can see him like, <laughs> and I'm sorry, like man. Come on, I'm working. Right. I'm, you know, I'm alive right now. I mean, you need to understand that, man. Just we'll be very fast. Come on. And then yeah. the bodyguards kind of go like, like guys, come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, like, like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be talking back. Like, Hold on, wait. I need to take a photo. Like, what? Man, that's insane. Man. That's crazy. That's uncomfortable. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's those are some ridiculous moments. I feel like you go through those every single day with fans. Fans are fans are crazy. And, and it's crazy because I mean I'm not thinking about it all the day, but now you asking me and start to try to remember like, oh man, that happened, and that happened, that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, then once, whenever they start happening, like, oh wait, that happened, and it starts clicking. No, oh, that happened, that happened. You that know happened, what is another happened, no. another crazy moment? So the same event in Paris, France. It's, the people around me, uh, around me, I mean, know me. I don't, I don't like to to talk too much. I don't I don't like too much the attention or whatever. So I was in, in, in Paris, France, and I got a, a, an interview uh, on the street in a really popular place in, 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 in France with a lot of people. So imagine this, uh, I'm, I'm talking with, with, with the woman who's like uh, with the interview with me. I'm talking with her and a guy with a huge, crazy camera follow me. So all the people is, is start to to watch us like, hey, who is this guy? And asking, and you can see between the people like asking, hey, who is this guy? Talking to each other like, I mean, maybe for you it's like whatever, but for me it's like, oh, I oh, hate this. Yeah. I and hate this. Like, oh my gosh, that's Brandon. That's Brandon. Oh my god. Oh my god. Or maybe uh, maybe they they don't know me. Like maybe they don't know I'm like Brandon Moreno, whatever. But they're like, hey, who is this guy? Like, I don't know. <laughs> and that's uncomfortable for me for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. oh. For sure. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, those are definitely a lot of ridiculous moments. Like I said, you probably go through those every single day. And now we're just reminding you of them. But moving on to N, N is like now and next, kind of like two parts. So what are some some burn moments going on in your life right now? Obviously, you don't have a fight scheduled, but what are some fights that maybe are are on the horizon? My, my new, I think my new uh, barn target in my life is to keep my belt back, my, my, they keep the belt for me uh, with me uh, a, a long time. Last time, so I won the belt in, in in Arizona, but I lost my first defense, and I felt very very sad, very frustrated with myself, very disappointed because I mean, I worked so hard for that moment, and in the next fight I lost it. Like, come on, man. And it was crazy and very frustrated too because I put a lot of effort in my training camp for that fight. I think that was one of the problems. I put a lot of effort, like my training camp was very, very hard and I burned my body, literally. Like I was like swelling all day, like, like very, very tired, very sore in every single training session. So maybe that's what, that was one of the problems for, for that fight too. 
So right now I'm very f I'm very focused to to be smart. I think it's the new the new era of, of Brandon Moreno because I was putting a lot of hard fights, very entertaining fight for the people, and it's fine because I I want a lot of uh, fans, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of followers, whatever. But I mean, at the same time, I'm, I need to think about my career and my legacy. Uh, so I want to keep the belt. I want to keep the belt. I want to keep fighting. Uh, I'm starting to think maybe after this, I want to keep my my MMA legacy intact. Like I don't, I just want to go off of the sport at the top. And then, and then I don't know, man. I, maybe I'm, I start to think about boxing in the future. Really? Oh, I, 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 yeah. I mean, my boxing coach is like, man, you. I mean, you can box like really box. No against a fucking YouTuber. No against a <laughs> no no. You really can box with like a, a yeah. with a, like a with a real professional boxer. real boxer. So I don't soon? know. Man. Do you think I'd be soon? Nah, not soon. A, a few years, a few more years. But I mean, that's something I'm interested in for sure. Do you ever think you'll go up to 35 and go for champ champ status? <sighs> You know what? A lot of people ask me that, but I mean, my body is perfect for 125. Five, five. Okay. You know? So stay at that. Yes. I, I have an amazing, an amazing wake up to 125 because uh, it's hard to do it, but it's not that crazy hard. So I can keep my, my energy for the fight and, and still uh, recover a good weight in the moment when I step in the octagon. So... Uh, 135, the guys are huge, man. Yeah. The, the, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I trained before with Aljamain Sterling, with Dominic Cruz, with Chito Vera, with T.A. Dillashaw, with other 125, 125 with Dwalish Billy. Um, oh, yeah. But this, these guys are, like, different. His, his body, their body is different. So I have a, a, a good reach for the division. Okay. But I don't know, man. Uh, you know, the future can, can mm -hmm. talk. For sure, for sure. So is it, is it Pantoja next? I mean, uh, man, the, the people need to understand. Actually, he needs to understand I'm not even decide who is the next. <laughs> I know. I saw the video. He was literally like bugging you in, after your fight. Like, Everything. when are we fighting? When are we fighting? And you're like, dude, just let me just <laughs> let, let me enjoy, enjoy the moment. moment. Man, I mean, everything started very friendly. Like, he come with me, very respectful. Like, hey, man, uh, right now is your moment. I'm very happy for you. And... In that point, everything was nice, right? Like, oh, wow, that's, that's cool. That's very cool. But then uh, he started to be very intense with, hey, but tell me when is the when we can fight to uh, when when we can fight. Tell me, tell me right now. Like, man, I don't even know, man. I <laughs> I I finished my fight like ten minutes ago, so I don't even know. I I told, and I told him like, man, just let me enjoy this little moment, just right now, okay? Mm -hmm. I already told you you are the next. I think you deserve it, but man, just let me enjoy the moment. But he started to get like very intense again, like, oh, hey, didn't tell me, tell me, tell me. Then the, the bodyguard from the UFC, like, hey, man, like, just get out, like, yeah, go away, go What's away. Uh, but man, if you if you ask me, like, I think he deserve it. I think he's the next. Uh, I I was I've been talking with the UFCs, uh, so hopefully I can get a fight in July. I want to fight here fight in, week? Uh, in fight international fight. I would love to do it. Uh, I asked for that uh, pay per view last year. They say no. Actually, they they uh, uh, gave me the next pay per view. So was oh, yeah. international fight with the first. Oh, it was pen. It was, was it the Pena card? The next one where you were under. Yeah. So it was fight week in the first or the first week of July. So they gave me the next pay per view mm -hmm. in, in 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 Dallas against Kai Kara France, July thirty. Yeah, that's right. How, that's right. That's how right. important is it to you to to get that fight back with Pantoja? Because you you lost him on the Ultimate Fighter, then you lost to him in the UFC. Um, like, is it just dying to you? Like, man, I I gotta get that one back. Or are you just like um, chilling about it? Like, he's whatever. He's just chilling. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I mean, that a uh, competitive part of myself. For sure, he's saying like, "Hey, I want to fight against him, and I want to beat him because he he beat me before, right?" And I think like three, four, uh, four years ago, um, I I was like that, like I was like very angry with myself, like, "Oh, come on, I want to fight against this guy again. I want the rematch," uh, and you know, just just angry about about it. But right now, I'm very I'm very relaxed. Um, I wanna buy, I wanna fight against him. No, f just for uh, beat him. I I wanna fight against him to see my own abilities to 
to see all my uh, evolution in the sport, okay? And I think that can be really a, a huge thing for my legacy. Imagine, I mean, I beat the guy who beat me twice in, in the past. I think it's, it's an another good step for my legacy. I mean, I I can't I come from a crazy rivalry, a historic fourth uh, uh, fight against Davidson Figueroa, and now I have the possibility to be to beat uh, Alexander Pantoja, who yeah. beat me before. So speaking of four fights, how is it? How hard is it to fight someone four times? Is it like different each time, or it's, is it the same? No, no, no. It's it's uh, for sure it's hard. Because imagine, I mean, I spent two years thinking in the same guy, you know, everything started in December 2020 and everything finished in, in January 2023. So it was like, yeah, two years, right? Like mm -hmm. two years thinking in the same guy, thinking in, a, in the game plan, I guess Demison Figueredo, he know me, I know him. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's very stressful, very stressful. Um that's another thing maybe that can affect my performance in, in, in Anaheim. Like, I need to fight against this guy. Yeah. You know, boring about the same game plan, the same, like, kind of, uh, uh, you know, the same opponent. But I don't know. It's about experience. It's about to keep calm in, 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 in comfortable moments, like I say before. Uh, when I got the fight, the fourth fight against Davison, I was like, man. I think this is the last one. That's why I was taking like, this is the last dance, the last dance with each other. Uh, because I knew if, like, hey, I need to make an statement in this one to prove the world who is the best, and you will never see that guy again. You think it's done, completely done? That chapter? Yeah. I mean, he's going to 135. Yeah. Um, I will, I, my plan is to stay in 125 for sure. So, yeah, for sure, well, I think it's over. So what about this scenario? What if he goes Let's 135? Go. I love, I love. I love. <laughs> 135, he becomes a champ. Are you going up the for the fifth time? I, I think he can't be the champ in 135. Was... Because, so, his advantage in 125 was uh, his uh, weight cut, his body. In the moment when uh, he went to the fight, he recovered a lot of weight, and he was, like, bigger than the, all the competition. He, he always uh, was uh, bigger than me, than, the, I don't know, like Alex Perez, than uh, Benavides. Benavides, you know. Uh, but he he doesn't uh, uh, have that advantage in 135, man. And mm. he doesn't have the, the reach, at ah. least, for the Division two. So, I don't know, man. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I, I'll I, be I, curious. You look, you look at a matchup with him versus Sean O'Malley, and it's just like, whoa. <sighs> It's no, not good. It's not, not good. good, man. I mean, no brain. And he's not. Is he? he no brain. No <laughs> See, so you need to help me with my Spanish. That no is that is even racist. Nah, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm not. I'm not even joking. So I obviously I I have to take Spanish at school and stuff, and literally no idea what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm sitting there. I'm like I'm writing down something. I'm like, okay, what does this mean? Pull up Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> Let, yeah, uh, no. but I mean, geez, I just I'd, no, I just make fun with uh, with that because in this in this new life, everything is racist. everything is racist. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I I make fun about it. Uh -huh. But yes, man. So I, Davison is he's very tough. He will have a um, very funny fights in, in the Bantam with division, but I don't think it's enough to get the title. Mm -hmm. For sure. For All sure. right, Brandon. Thank you so much. You just thank felt you. burn in your life. Um, tell the audience where they can find you, Instagram, all your platforms. Guys, you can f follow me in, you know, Instagram. You can follow me in TikTok. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm terrible in social media, man. I'm <laughs> terrible, but I'm doing my best. I promise. Uh, I opened my uh, my OnlyFans. I'm not naked. Sorry, but, I mean, <laughs> but I'm putting like tutorials, technique, and okay. all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, you can follow me there and in Facebook and whatever. I don't have TikTok. TikTok. Not is, tic I don't. No, have I mean I don't have. Sorry, uh, Twitter. Twitter. Oh, yeah, Twitter. Yeah. I hate Twitter. It's terrible. I don't understand <laughs> it still. I have not I don't even know what I'm doing. You just. I think you just put your thoughts in a message, but yeah. the problem is the thoughts of the people right now. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, you heard the champ. Go give him some love. As a gift for coming on the podcast, we do, we will be giving you the Black Label Edition Burn Factory hoodie right here. Woohoo! Let's go! And the, Only, hat. and the hat. Only guests can get these who are on the podcast. Let's go! Yeah. Man, Reserved thank for you. you. 
Let's go, guys. Thank you so yes, much. Thank really you, appreciate it. Gosh, I had so many brain. Nice. <laughs> I had so many brain burn moments on this episode. <laughs> I, can't, I can't speak my Spanish. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm joking. But thank you, Brandon, for coming on this podcast. Guys, thank so you really so appreciate much. Thank it. you so much for the for your time too, and you know for the gifts. And we have an amazing uh, talk each other. Yes, yes for thank sure. You. Like always, please visit my foundation at priestjamesfoundation.org. Again, priestjamesfoundation.org to understand why this is called the Burn Factory. Come on, give me some love. Please donate so I can go build more putting greens at these hospitals because it would truly mean a lot. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe at the Burn Factory podcast. And we'll see you guys for the next episode. Peace. Brandon Moreno, the champ, just felt burn in his life. <laughs> Doing a little dance with the belt. But Brandon, uh, as a person coming on the podcast, you do have to call someone out, like the champ always calls out someone. So who, who are you going to call out to come on the Burn Factory podcast? Cheeto, let's go. Cheeto, 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 Cheeto Vera. We're getting an amazing time talking to each other, so... Cheeto, let's come on. Come on the burn factory. Still burning your life. Let's go.